Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kenny, and this is um, Daytime Divas, um, Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2. Um, so I'm doing the pilot, and the, the um, second episode was called um, Coma Bump. And let me say, this is a really great show, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, shout out to my brother, um, Dante Johnson. He was, the, he was the first person that told me I needed to watch this show, and... I watched it and immediately fell in love with it because from the um, previews, it looked like it was going to be kind of cheesy, so I really didn't want to get into it, but then when I watched it, I was like, yo, I I laughed my ass off the entire time. Like, these women are fucking amazing, and let's just say it's great writing, great acting, you know, a great scripted series, and I'm so here for it, so let me get started. Well, the show is based around this reality show called The Lunch Hour, which is very reminiscent of The View, um, uh, The Talk, and, um, dang, what's the name of the other show? <laughs> it just totally slipped my mind, but it'll, it'll come to me. But, um, but yeah, it's, in a, it's pretty much a show that's built around five women on a panel discussing various issues, and each of the women are entirely different. You have the main character who's played by Vanessa Williams. Her name is Maxine. Maxine is this award-winning journalist who pretty much is the creator of The Lunch Hour. And she's kind of reminiscent of, like, Barbara Walters. Then you have Heather. And Heather is, like, the, you know, is, is, the, is pretty much, like, she has the perfect image. She is a Christian. And um, she's also, you know, um, a music artist. But behind closed doors... Her life is anything but perfect. One, her son is, I would say her son is transgender, and he wants to be called Ella, and he likes to wear women's clothes, and likes to wear makeup and all of that. And her husband is, you know, from the, from the um, first episode, you can kind of, you can kind of get a sense that there's some domestic violence going on in her marriage, but she's concealing it. Because there was even a scene where um, where um, where one of the characters was um, kind of caught the fact that she was wearing concealer, and they were like, you know, is your husband roughing you up or something? And she played it off as, and she pretty much just got very defensive and played it off as if nothing's happened. So Heather is a girl who's all about her image. Image for Heather is everything, and she always plays like she's this squeaky clean, you know. Um, you know, sweet Christian that everybody loves. Then we have Nina. Nina is pretty much the serious one out of the crew. She is a Pulitzer Prize winning um, reporter who is on the panel. And uh, she, I would have to say, is very is, is a very sinister character because she, she definitely makes moves. Um, her husband... Um, is is named Andrew. He's a he's a politician who's running for Congress, and she's having an affair with Maxine's son Sean. Now Sean is the head producer of the show, and Sean's fine. And we've definitely seen this guy. I forgot his name, but if y'all know his name, put it down in the comments. But we've seen him on you know um, hit the floor, and he's also playing the character of of um of Dion on If Loving You Is Wrong. But he, I love his character on this show because he is pretty much the man in charge. He has to run. He pretty much runs the show, you know, making sure that the camera angles, you know, are popping. But, you know, he's having an affair with Nina, and he knows Nina's a married woman. And there's a lot of drama involving that. The next person on the panel is Kibby. Now, Kibby is very reminiscent of Lindsay Lohan. She's this child star who ended up getting caught up in, uh, in the life of drugs and alcohol and heavy partying. And currently she's on probation, and she's bisexual, and she's actually dating a woman um, at this current time. And, you know, she's, she's pretty much, as she says, she's sexually fluid. And... But, uh, but Kitty is, you know, is Maxine's favorite. You know, Maxine looks out for Kitty. She kind of sees Kitty as this, you know, as like this child that she can somewhat nurture. And we even see a scene where, um, Kitty is like really getting hounded by her probation office, 
from, from her, I'm sorry, her probation officer, and Maxine goes in there and she shuts this shit, she shuts this shit down and lets her know you need to take her off probation. She's suffering long enough. But of course she got it out for Kitty because Kitty's a former child star, and now that she's fallen, you know, you got these probation officers who like, I want to make an example out of you. Well. <laughs> Maxine, in a few words, just kind of shut her down and was like, "Look, um, <laughs> I can pretty much put it out here that that you're just a messy ass bitch. So you need to take all probation, and you need to do it now." And her probation was lifted. But Kibby is definitely a, a good character because, yes, she's this child star. She has this reckless life, but it's sad because she also a lot of this recklessness is due to the fact that she has a bitch for a mother. I mean, her mother is a mess. Like, her mom, you know, is partying up like she's a teenager, doing drugs, doing all of that. And she constantly uses um, Kibby for money. And if Kibby doesn't give her what she asks, her, she always threatens to expose her from things from the past. So she always has something to hold over Kibby's head to get Kibby to give what she wants. So Kibby's a character I definitely... I definitely uh, I, I definitely responded to because you can see that she really is a good person, but unfortunately she got caught up, you know, in the lifestyle of being rich and famous, but then also having a manipulative, you know, Singali like her mother, you know, that she's been caring for. And and I'm a you know, I'm a you know, keep it moving. Now the character that really steals the damn show is Mo. Mo is played by Tashina Arnold. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Tashina Arnold. You know, loved her on Martin, Everybody Hates Chris. I mean, you name it. Anything she's done, I've been a big fan of. And I love her as a singer. I love her as a as an all-around entertainer. But Tashina Arnold, she brings it as Mo. Now, Mo is a stand-up comedian. And for me, she kind of um, she's kind of reminiscent of Cheryl Underwood on The Talk. You know, she always has those funny one-liners and she is over the top and Mo she hates Maxine her and Maxine do not like each other at all they forever are going back and forth in a very conniving now Mo she's messing around with the public assistant named Leon who's this really cute young you know um, Mexican Latino and he is sexy as hell. But they even had a scene where they were having sex in the in, in her damn van, and he's like hitting her from the back or whatever. And then while he's having sex, he he just blurts out that I love you, and she says, "Look, if you're not gonna talk dirty, if you're not gonna talk dirty, don't say nothing at all. Uh, yeah, keep going, keep going, go faster, go faster." And definitely. And then later on, we see that. He ends up blackmailing her because he has a tape of of her of, of the two of them having sex, and he's gonna make it go viral if she doesn't play along with what he wants. And we see later on that he wants to be a producer. That's his real goal. But he comes from he pretty much comes from humble beginnings or whatever. Because um, you know he I mean we actually see the scene where she kind of drops him off, and it's in like a kind of like the hood, you know, she's like, I'm not getting out in this neighborhood, I'm not getting out in this neighborhood, you crazy? Because he wanted to take her up to meet his family, because he really is falling for for Mo, but Mo is like, look, we have this sex, you know, afternoon delight and all, but that's all it is, um, I, I, I don't want nothing more than that, you know, you cute, you young, you sexy, we have, we have a good time, but I'm not trying to take it there with you. And she pretty much decided to cut it off. And when she decided to cut it off, that's when he blackmailed her. So we pretty much, and so pretty much, um, she's like, okay, what the hell do you want? And I think he wants to move up. But Leon is fucking horrible at his job, though. <laughs> he is a fucking mess. But he's but he's definitely good to look at. Now the whole purpose of the show is that Maxine has the left chair which is the main chair of the show. She's pretty much the anchor of the ship. And you got all of these five, all of these counterparts, you know, and they all want Maxine's spot. 
but Maxine is the creator of the show, so Maxine is like, it's my show. And Mo, being the main person that's her biggest antagonist, is always coming up with a way to get Mo to, to try to take Maxine down. Like, when Maxine said that you're fired, she's like, oh no, boo-boo. Because they had a segment where they were, um, where they were just showing off their beach bodies or whatever. And while she was walking in, Kibby had tripped up, um, Mo. And, and then, um, and then, and then, like, you know, um, Maxine was like, oh, watch yourself. Look like you tripped on something. And then Mo was like, yes, it was your vagina. <laughs> And then on top of it, she made this shit go viral. So she's like, bitch, I made this shit go fucking viral. I'm making your show what it is, bitch. You can't fucking fire me. I'm I'm pretty much ratings gold. And I'm one of your best fucking co hosts on the panel. So bitch, no. You're not you're not gonna play this game with me. And also, um, so that's pretty much what we have going on. We pretty much have all of them want that same spot. You know, Nina's messing with Sean, and I'm thinking she's messing with Sean to try to, you know, get information, and, you know, because Sean's the head producer, so that gives her some type of leverage on the set, you know, and also, and, 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 pretty, and pretty much it kind of, like, puts her in that spot where she can try to get what she can to get ahead, and we definitely got Heather, who, who Heather is a good at two shoes, and she has the perfect Christian image, but... Heather's messy as hell too, and <laughs> she she definitely has her qualms, but <laughs> but yes, um, but I definitely like the scene with her and her husband and her kids was on the red carpet, and we see her son. Her son looks mad as hell because he's wearing a suit, and you know the husband's like, I cannot believe that my son is actually wearing panties under his suit. And they're pretty much on the red carpet having this conversation amongst themselves. And she's like, look, you need to kind of make peace with this and start calling our son Ella. <laughs> I was like, they are too much. Because, yes, he is all about fashion. He's about, you know, makeup. He's about everything. Like, her, her son is, is definitely a, a girl trapped in a boy's body. And it's crazy. It's, it is hilarious. And what ends up, and also what ends up happening is that um, Maxine has the image that she has survived all of these years in in the entertainment industry without having plastic surgery. Now that's the image she created, but it's a damn lie because she pretty much goes to get an eyebrow lift and her vitals fall and she goes into a coma and she's in a coma for three days so therefore the <clears throat> the you know the wolves are coming out and they are they are willing to take Maxine's spot you know um and pretty much you see Sean is the head producer so Sean is going to be running the show and they, 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 they decided to keep the show going even though Maxine is not going to be there and it's just going to continue with the four of them and there, there was this big thing of who's going to take the left chair and the main person who wants it is Mo and Mo is like I will do whatever it takes to get it because we even see that um, Mo they all go to the hospital to supposedly have a meeting with Sean, but also to check on Maxine. While they're there, Mo takes a picture of um, of Maxine's records and kind of shows it to Sean like, uh, yeah, yeah, um, all these years she's been saying that she's never had plastic surgery, but obviously she's here getting an eye lift, so, um, an eyebrow lift, so, um, yeah, so I think I I I should um be in that left chair because Mo she's funny as shit, but that is one conniving bitch because she is all about winning and she will play any game she can to get what she wants and we already see that with Mo, so she kind of lets her know and um also um while you're at it give these flowers to your mother and tell her they're from me and walked off. I'm like, Mo, you crazy bitch. But I love it. She is hilarious because Mo is so over the top. But she's very messy at the same time. And Maxine, on the other hand, you know, we even saw in the beginning of the episode, Maxine is a power bitch. And she 
holds no bars and she's and she kind of has some of that similar type of um characteristics of ebony screws from a diva's christmas carol she's a tight ass because there was a there was like um an outfit that she wore last season she's like oh hell no i wore this last season you know what take this to the cleaners and I'll wrap it and give it to my house and give it to my housekeeper for her birthday. I'm like, you foul bitch. <laughs> well, hey, she's like, hey, I ain't gonna throw it away and I'm not gonna wear it, so I'll give I'll give away my hand me downs. I mean, but she is so over the top and she's a, she's this extreme diva. But you know, in episode two, we find out a little bit more about Mike's Maxine because Maxine got some secrets of her own as well, not just the cosmetic surgery shit, but also something else. So, pretty much what they what um, they decided to go on with the show, and Sean chose Nina to be in the left chair. Not surprising because he's fucking her, and <laughs> and pretty much you could tell that they 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 had their moments where you know Sean and Nina interact, and Sean wants her to leave her husband Andrew and be with him, but she's saying like, look, it's complicated, it's complicated. I can't just leave him and. You know, it's it's just not it's just not that simple. But then we're gonna actually see a little bit more about Andrew too, because in the, in episode one, you know, Nina and him are trying to have a child, but she hasn't been able to conceive, and we see that that's going on. And and a, but a, but of course, she's thinking power strategy. A pregnant wife is like gold for for a politician who's running for office. So she's playing a game with that as well. So. Going back to to the whole thing, like you know that um, Maxine's in a coma, you know while getting sur while trying to get cosmetic surgery. Um, uh, he pretty much decides to put Nina in the chair, and most like why the hell we would put Nina in the chair? Nina's boring as hell. Don't nobody care about you know you know her you know her um, covering you know. Um, covering, you know, pollution in the third world and shit like that. You know, she was just going in. And when it came time for the show, pretty much, um, you know, Nina was about to sit in the left chair. Mo sat her ass right there and pretty much made Nina sit in the next chair. She's like, oh, no, I'm taking this damn shit because Mo wants Maxine's spot. And she's pretty much the biggest rival to Maxine. So they're doing the show, all and um, we see that Sean um, is actually running the show um, from the hospital with his mother. Next thing you know, we see that Maxine's vital signs are now up, and she comes out of the coma, and she witnesses what's going on because Sean was about to turn it off because he didn't want her to see it. But then she flips the fuck out. She's like, "Oh, this." Thirsty ass bitches couldn't wait till I was even cold to try to take my damn show. Oh, I'm a fucking show this shit up. Um, yeah, tell cameraman to do this, tell the cameraman to do that, and she literally gives Sean the instructions. And of course, Sean's gonna listen to her because one, she is the creator of the show, and she's also his mother. So he's doing all of this shit, and and like you say, but mom, doing that will will we would shoot have his bad side. She's like, I know. Make it happen. So he's shooting all these bad camera angles. You know, all this craziness is going on, and she's like, "Look at it, a shit show," which means they're gonna want me back. You know, because without me, this show is nothing. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be in a coma for a while, and I'm gonna, you know, you know, I'm gonna ride this out and. I'm going to, you know, by the time I return, I'm going to have more ratings than anything. So, therefore, these bitches don't know what they got coming. And I was like, that bitch Maxine is not to be fucked with. Because Maxine is is very shrewd in her own fucking way. So, her and Mo are true shrewd bitches who really go head to head. And then you got, um, and then you got, you know, Kibby, Nina, and Heather all in the middle. And they all also want want their want their shine but Kibby on the other hand is very loyal to Maxine because Maxine got her back. So now I'm gonna talk about episode two, um, which is um called um Coma Bump. Um 
we're pretty much see that um, they're still running the show without Maxine. They even do a segment where they're talking about Maxine's accomplishments and all that. And the girls are just talking buku shit, except for Kitty. And, you know, they're all, you know, making their own little slide comments. Like, and we see that Nina literally memorized the entire damn segment. Like, she literally is mimicking everything. She's a philanthropist, a humanitarian. She's this and she's that. And I'm like, see, Nina is a power-hungry bitch as well. And Nina definitely, I think, with, with her situation, with her messing with Sean, as well as what, she's, what she has going on with her husband, it's all about a power play. And and pretty much um, then then afterwards we see that um, that uh, Sean calls Sean calls Maxine and lets her know like look I'm getting shit from the president he's got he is up my ass right now so look you need to you need to come back to the show or there's gonna be some changes she's like boy please they ain't gonna do nothing like I'm just gonna milk this out a little longer I'm just creating more tension and I'm, cre and I'm creating more of a ratings draw because of my disappearance so it's actually helping but it's like yeah it's helping but how long they're not going to keep waiting long and not and not and um have that open slot so he, so Sean lets um lets Maxine know that look they're looking to bring in other people they're talking about Tyler Banks or Meredith Vieira or um, Ann Coulter, and <laughs> it was so funny because, Ann, because when he mentioned Ann Coulter, um, Maxine was like, oh no, definitely not, definitely not, because it has to be a woman, and I was like, damn, because <laughs> everybody know how Ann Coulter is, Ann Coulter is a, is, a, is a fucking piece of work, and that's all I'm going to say about her ass, and then, um, but then, Sean mentions Michelle Obama, that woke Maxine up, because former first lady, Oh, trust me, she will be ratings gold if she gets on a reality show. So she's like, oh, fuck that. And next thing you know, and then it was also funny because um, Heather, you know, is using this as an opportunity. Like, you know, I've been praying very hard for Maxine, and I, I, and I want to, you know, do something very special for her. And she has this song called For God's Sakes. And Maxine, you know, was like talking buku shit and was and, and still is making Sean control the show. She's like, Oh, that bitch about to sing? Go to commercial and next you know, for a guy's sake clip and I was like, Damn But then when the come up when it came back and it went back to Heather, Heather again tried to sing the song and she's like for God's sake, like for God's, and then also here, yeah, for God's sake, what the hell you think? I was dead? And we see Maxine is in the audience, and she's back on the fucking show. And, <laughs> and, the, and the crowd goes mad that she's now back, and she's ready to do her thing. And then, um, and then the next thing you know, she pretty much, you know, pretty much kicks um she pretty much kicks Mo to get out of her damn chair and she gets back into her seat and it's it's like ratings gold and we actually later on see we actually end up meeting Jason who's the head of the network and we, I'm gonna get to them in a second. But then but before that happens, um, you know, she has she she pretty much has a meeting with Kibby, you know, because Kibby's her girl. But Kibby, while while um while Maxine was in a coma, after Kitty had to run in with um with her mother, who's a who's pretty much a blood sucking bitch, she and her girlfriend decide to party and they, they they meet this guy who buys them drinks but they end up getting drunk and then going back to their place having sex and they were also doing drugs. And they were pretty much throwing stuff off off of the balcony because they I think they live like in a in like this um, penthouse loft or whatever. The police are called and both the girlfriend and the guy are arrested. But you know, Kitty they told Kitty to hide, so there's no record of Kitty being even involved. But Kitty feels remorseful because she had a relapse, you know, while um, while um, Maxine was in a coma. And she thought that that was Maxine was going to, she thought that Maxine knew about it. So she was, at first was like, thinking that, um, she's like, you know, I, you know, I, I, I am, I, I, I knew that things were going to be hard for you, but I am a little disappointed. And, and she's like, 
oh, I, I'm so sorry. But then she says, I just knew. And then next, you know, Maxine was like, well, I just knew that those bitches was going to give you hell because they all want my spot. And all of a sudden, Kitty's relieved because she's like, she thought that she knew about her almost getting arrested and her relapsing. But it wasn't that at all. So she feels bad because she relapsed. And she and pretty much she's going to see to it that Maxine doesn't find out about that. And But she pretty much tells her that, look, you know, um, I just want you to know that, you know, I thank you for having my back. And now I know you really care about me. And the rest of those bitches, you know, they can all go. But, but then she was about to leave. She was like, no, save it for five more minutes. Because I want them to, I'm pretty sure that those bitches are probably listening, you know, outside that door. And I want them to think that I'm about to replace them. So she's like, oh, so Kitty's like, oh, so you want to make them sweat? And she's like, yeah, just like a hook, just like hookers on a dollar day. I was like, bitch! <laughs> I love me some fucking Maxine. Maxine is not to be fucked with. Um, then, um, then we pretty much get a scene with, um, with Sean, well, we, then, we, um, we, then we also get a scene with Sean and Nina. Sean is avoiding Nina since the hospital because she pretty much says her situation is complicated and she needs time to sort things out. So he's like, no, you need time to work things out. So she still wants Sean even though she still wants to keep her husband in the picture. And, and she's like, look, um, <laughs> he's like, look, until you figure things out, I ain't got nothing else to say. But then she kind of lets him know that she loves him and all of that. So he's really into her. But he said that, look, my patience is wearing thin, so you need to make some moves. But then, you know, she lets him know that, look, my husband's about to run for office. I can't abandon him now. And then he says, what if he wins? It's like this shit is never going to end. Which is smart. So why not leave her alone? But yet you still want her anyway. But anyway, <laughs> just goes to show right there that Sean's crazy and then we also find out that Sean um, is actually Maxine's nephew but she adopted him as her son and you know pretty much he his parents were he pretty much came from a from from um from um from from, from, from like a bad living situation with his parents and Maxine adopted him and he's now her son so that so we find that out about Sean so I think Sean is definitely looking for, you know, for like a powerful woman because Nina is very intelligent and very powerful and she's a journalist just like, um, just like um, Maxine, but Maxine was a more successful journalist than she was. But it's just like we just seen that more and more is going to be some shit with that. Then we actually see that um, Kibby actually, we actually meet Kibby's sister, Tandy. Now, her fucking mother is so trifling that she sent her little sister to get money from her and made the little sister, you know, you know, you know, skip school to, 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 um, to run into um, Kibby to ask for money. So this really has made Kibby disgusted because, as I said, we see that Kibby is a good person. She's just caught in a bunch of mess. A lot of it's stemming from her own mother. And... Her mother is like, and like, you know, Tandy is like, I, I wish I wouldn't have, I wish I didn't have to do this. And Kibby's like, I know. So we actually see that Kibby and her sister are very close. And she really does love her sister. But now the mother is using, is using her sister Tandy to get, to, um, to take from, to take from Kibby, which is crazy. Then we actually see that um, we have a meeting. We actually meet Jason, who's the head of the network. He gives roses to Maxine. He is excited because the damn show is rating his gold, and he is loving every minute of it. After he leaves her office, he gets pretty much cornered by, um, by Mo. And Mo is playing off the fact, you know, she just had surgery. She's, not, you know, she's just not feeling well. And after her being in that coma, you know, I think you need to look out for her and, you know, give us girls more responsibility on the show. You know, you know, make sure that, you know, that she's not going to fall apart. So, so we actually see that, okay, David has now decided to sit in on the show, which really pisses Maxine off because she said that, look, what the fuck? Like, I don't need nobody babysitting me. What kind of bullshit is this? So, and she's mad as hell that David is there, and 
we actually and now they pretty much have a have a guest a doctor named um, Justin Kimbleman. Well, Maxine switches her cards, and you know because Leon fucked up yet again, and he's making these damn lattes or whatever. And while and so pretty much during the show, she's already nervous because David's there watching, you know, the show to make sure everything's um, everything's going smoothly. So she's kind of off her game. But then she's asking questions to Justin Timberman as if he's Justin Timberlake. She's asking questions about him dating Britney Spears, about, um, you know, questions about, you know, about music like R&B, hip-hop, soul. And I was like, And he's like, um, no, I'm not into music like that. He's like, I'm, I'm here to promote my book and promote my... Because she was about to go into her thing, but then, you know, she was nervous because the the president of the of the network is right there watching, so it threw her off her game, so she relied on her cue cards, and she was asking the wrong questions. She was asking questions about Justin Timberlake versus questions that related to his profession as a doctor. So that was fucking crazy. Mo was all behind that shit. And we pretty much see that, um, later on we see that um, Sean pulls Mo to the side and was like, look, um, this shit cannot happen again fire Leon's ass and she says oh no because if um if Leon gets fired then everybody's gonna know about why your mother really was in the hospital and you know and he's like he's an idiot what the hell and she's like yeah but you know this but there are some people out here who actually have to work for what they have not everyone has a mother that gives them a job and I'm like, ooh, that damn Mo is one is one messy fucking bitch. But I'm here for her ass because Mo is all about getting that fucking chair at all costs. She wants Maxine's fucking head, and she's like the biggest one, the biggest antagonist against Maxine. Um, so because of that, or because of what happened with her messing up, you know, questioning um, Dr. Justin Timberman, and instead. You know, you know what, and and pretty much because she was crushing him in regards to him being Justin Timberlake, Jason has decided that she should, um, they should cut her to only three shows a week until she's better, and that they have a guest person come in on the next few days. And then also in this episode, we come to find um, Kitty makes a discovery that Nina is pregnant, but we know she is, but we pretty much know that. She's not pregnant by her husband. She's, and we can pretty much kind of sense that she's, she's pregnant by Sean. And she tells Kibby, don't tell anybody about this. No one can know. And Kibby says, okay, I'm not going to say anything. And then we also get a little bit more of Heather's story. You know, Heather comes in, you know, um, I think her husband's name is Tim. And, uh, she um she was there for um for some costume fittings and she had some pictures and of course her son Ella wanted to see them. He's like, Oh mom, this collar is sick <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> like he is a little girl, he can't help it. Oh poor baby. And he is just like mad, like, Well hell, he likes to look at dresses, I guess well and the husband is just real mad and she's like, you know, are you hungry? And he's like well, we were supposed to have dinner plans tonight. Remember, I got, and, he, and she kind of, she remember, oh, yeah, she's like, you just got a promotion. I'm so sorry. You know, I don't know how. She's like, you don't know how? Well, maybe you're so into your show, your music, and everything else. You're so, you're so um, wrapped up into yourself that you don't even have, you don't even have the time to focus on anything else other than yourself, not even your own husband. And she says, I resent that. And then all of a sudden he busts up like, what you just said? And she and they also have a black um have, they also have a black nanny, so yeah. They they pretty much are those types, you know. You know, they got little black people working. They got this black nanny working for them. And she pretty much tells them to take the kids to go watch T V and she says that look, people at work are already starting to notice the bruises and I'm not about to wear sister dresses. So I was like, Ooh shit. And then we also get a scene with Nina and Andrew. And it's clearly obvious that Nina and, and Andrew are one and the same. But 
their marriage is more of an arrangement than anything else. But they're very sinister fucking people. They all are about playing the game to get what they want. Him being a politician and her being a journalist and then also being on the panel of the lunch hour, they both are, are like conniving. But, the, but then again, she was saying that uh, a pregnant woman would do great for your campaign. She's already pregnant, but Andrew doesn't know that she is. So we're going to see how that plays out. And then we actually later on find out, we actually see that she actually does tell Sean that she is pregnant. So Sean immediately knows that he's the father. So I'm like, damn, Sean, that shit's going to be fucking crazy. Then we get a segment with Kitty and her girlfriend. You know, they're pretty much FaceTiming each other. And all of a sudden, she's going into this building, and the girlfriend's like, oh, my God, where are you going? And next thing you know, she goes into her apartment and walks in on the girlfriend and the dude that they party with. They end up they end there having sex in their apartment. So Kitty not only goes through that with, with her girlfriend, but we also see she gets into it with her mother because she's saying that you actually made Candy skip school to come and ask me for money. And she's like, well, the thing is, you, I don't know where you live at. She's like, yeah. And you think I will let you know my address, bitch? I don't want nothing to do with you. But you need to be better to Candy. Because if you're not better to Candy, I'm going to I'm gonna try to get custody of her and, get her and get her away from you. And she says, sweetie, you really think with your fucking reputation that any court would give you a fucking kid? You out your fucking mind, bitch. And then pretty much, you know, threw the water at her door and walked off. I'm like, her mother is a bitch from hell. She really is. And I really kind of buy for Kitty. But then, also on the show, um, Leon has been messing up like shit. And then, you know, he also has this other, this other girl who works with him. She wants his thing. So everybody is power tripping in this show. Everybody is trying to move up in some way. You know, Leon wants to be a producer, and the girl that works with him as a, another public assistant, she wants to be the head, she wants to be, you know, the head public assistant. You know, she works under him, and every time you turn around, she's like brown-nosing every wrong thing that Leon does because she wants that position. So she pretty much lets them know, like, you know um, what he's putting in your lattes and why they're so good? He's making the damn lattes with half and half. He ain't even making them with milk. So this motherfucker is literally putting pounds on these bitches, you know, with the damn lattes because it's like liquid crack. And we actually find that out. So we actually see later on that he gets demoted and um, the girl ends up becoming now the, the now the new head public assistant on the show. But he's like, he doesn't even fucking care. And we, hear, we, and we see this is, this is when he has a scene with him and Mo because they're buying supplies and stuff for the show or whatever. And they pretty much are going back and forth. And she, and she says that, look, you know, and then she's like, what? And then all of a sudden he lets her know that he really wants to be a producer. And she's like, cut boy, just be, like, maybe your parents didn't tell you this, but don't nobody give a damn about your ideas. And, she, and he's like, well, you sure as hell did when I brought up that damn sex tape. And he's like, look. And then the next thing you know, they go back to having sex again, and I'm like, that damn Mo is a damn freak. She is a cougar like no other. Got her that young ass boy, and he tearing her up, and he loving what she got. And then all of a sudden, he's like, shoot. And he and he know that he's giving it. He's giving Mo the, that good D. And next thing you know, him and Mo back at it again. And then we also see that um. So pretty much we also get a scene, you know, about us, um, you know, on the show where Mo decides to make another power play at Maxine. She lets Maxine know about her medical records, and she says that, you know I got a big mouth, so I suggest you play this the way I want to play it, or everybody going to know your business since you're such the poster child for never having plastic surgery, but yet it shows that you, that you, that you did it. I can make this go viral in a matter of seconds. So, you know, I suggest, you know, you play things my way or I'm going to take you down. So Maxine decides to um, make the confession. She actually confessed 
that she, when she went into a coma, she wasn't getting throat surgery that people thought she really was having cosmetic surgery. And, you know, she says, but thank God I didn't go through with that. I thank God that um, I actually went in a coma and I was never able to have the surgery. So she played that shit up and flipped it and got a standing ovation. The crowd ate it up. And pretty much she says, and I am going to be here five days a week. And I'm going to be here for all of you women and for all of us here in America. And then Jason's like, okay, I'm stepping back for now. So now she got her five days back. And it pissed Mo's ass off. You can literally see Mo fucking cringing in her fucking seat when Maxine started to tell the truth and completely just just um, stopped her plan right then and there. So now she ain't got no leverage. But, but Mo is a motherfucking mover, though. That's what I'm to say about Mo. She's funny as shit, but she's a motherfucking mover. She's always trying to find a way to take Maxine down. And then... We also, um, the episode ends, Maxine um, goes in, and we come to find out, you know, she's actually had an affair with her doorman that works um, that works at her building. Her and the doorman getting their groove on. Then we see this woman comes in and wanted to ask some questions in regards to Maxine. The guy was, at first, was very tight lipped, was very private, but then he starts, she starts throwing him money. So the question is, who is this woman? And what what does she have that can that can ruin Maxine? So I guess we're gonna find that out in the next episode. But that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I would love to talk to you about it. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Like this video, share this video, and comment on this video. And I will be back next week for the next episode of um, Daytime Divas. I am such a big fan of this show, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So until then, everybody, take care.